to me. It's weird to me how talented and and creative. And I, I mean, I know Jim has a rough time when you compliment him. He wants to crawl into his into, yeah. into his shoebox. But I got to say <laughs> it. I got to say it. The, Jim is creative and talented and he's and he's diligent and he's been doing this, been broadcasting for a long time, uh, like a super, but still insecure about all the things, all that he has to 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 that he can point to to say that I'm worthy, and and Jim is still weird about it. Yeah, it's 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 a weird fear. Like I remember I was touring with Dice, and it was probably like 1999 or 98, and uh, I had been doing it nine years at that point, and I loved Dice, and uh, he we were getting ready to go on, and he goes, uh, "You nervous?" And I'm like, well, yeah, a little. Uh, how about you? And he goes, I'm terrified. <laughs> it made me laugh because it was like even a guy like that who we were just doing like a thousand seat theater like you. He had yeah, done yeah. the garden, but he still had that weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fear at times. I think it's kind of healthy as long as it doesn't like stop you from doing shit. And it, it hasn't stopped. You. It's funny because I say that was as a kid. That's when I really uh, started standing up for myself because it was like in my head, like I was a sc really scary kid, like uh, like, you know, d scared of girls, scared to fight, scared. Yeah. I was real. My scared, dad was like, scary. Super. You make you made it sound scary as if you frightened people. Boo. No, it's the complete um, opposite. But um, I remember watching uh, Mike Tyson fight uh, Tyrell Biggs, do you? I don't know if you you remember that fight. The guy kind of looked like Muhammad Ali, a young Muhammad Ali. <laughs> no, uh, uh, no, I remember. I mean, I remember Tyrell Biggs, but I don't remember that fight. I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you the one at the after interview was him going. Yeah, every time I hit him, he was like, "Ooh, ow, ow, he's hurting me." <laughs> I mean, you remember that interview? No. <laughs> <laughs> He goes, I was hitting him. I could hear him making noises like a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Tyson, the fucking greatest. <laughs> oh, that is but, funny. but but the guy like he had no chance against Tyson. Everybody was like he had no chance. And somebody it was like it's, it, it's Tyrell Biggs, like whatever. Somebody ne the next tomato can stepping up. But they were in the in the room with him and they were work doing the pad work. And while they were pad doing the pad work, they're going, you the greatest champ. You got like it, they <laughs> were still giving him affirmations. And I was like, you're fighting this bum. You're Mike Tyson. And somehow you still need validation. And then I was like, if Mike Tyson don't want the smoke, nobody wants to smoke. But I don't that's think it's that. I don't think that's what was going on there. I think he was just staying on course. He was no. constantly remind. I don't think it's on some Mike didn't want the smoke. So he needed an affirmation to remind him to like, yeah, I'm a fighter. I don't think that's what was going on at it, all. It absolutely was. That's what was going on. Because I you vehemently me, disagree. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you why. Because here's a here's the thing. Mike Tyson. When you if you go see his his one man show, he talks about how he was afraid all the time. He was constantly afraid. So that was. But I'm saying that the the fact that his coaches were mindful enough to boost him up. It, it, I mean, I, I, if he would, he, he if, it, if I wasn't afraid, I'd be go look, relax. I'm good. It's Tyrell Biggs. Sit down. Let's let's eat nachos. But it, it, it wasn't. And I always remember that in my head. It's funny when you say that about Dice, this guy who I thought was like invincible. And you go, yeah. he has fears just like everybody else. Mm, and Ty well, Tyson's wrong. so great because he talks about like low self-esteem. His book, his biography is probably the best biography I've ever read. Really? Like, I, it, it was it was really beautiful because it's it, it was completely honest. Yeah. Um, yeah. Good, the bad, everything. And uh, really, really honest about not just the stuff that happened, but feeling like a piece of shit or feeling less than and feel, like, mm. all, all these things. And like, you know, for a guy like that to feel this way, it makes regular people feel like, all right, well, it's not so crazy if I right, feel right. Right. I, love, I love him, man. I think he's really, really uh, an honest guy in public life. Yeah, and a little bit off, though. Did you watch this podcast? The hot box, it gets a little crazy. I've seen, it, I saw the one where he's crying, talking about, um, <laughs> who is he talking about? It, was, it wasn't It was Sugar Ray Leonard. It was some, I think it was Sugar Ray on the show with him. He was getting choked. Oh, Alexander the Great. 
Uh, I mixed those guys up. He was talking. <laughs> <to him. laughs> when did he? When did he fight him? Yeah, that's what I mean. What a terrible mix-up. He didn't fight either one of those guys. Um, I, yeah, it was Alexander the Great. He was talking about, and it was funny to watch Mike get emotional. Uh, yeah, there's definitely a, a step. Uh, yeah, that's he's a, what I love about it. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He Which one of us don't have that shit? Yeah. What's that? The fear. Oh, that, that's nah, the, the that little yeah, yeah. hey, something a little wrong with you, nigga. Little tinge. Every yeah. one of you, all of us got that shit. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah wild sheep performers. You, right, but I, I think people, you you take your own fear and you magnify it more because it's yours, and you just you don't think. It's like on a pragmatic terms, you go, oh, everybody got that, but you right. don't think you think about it. It's just you. Um, it, it's always interesting. Yeah, I mean, I've known known Norton probably twenty years now. Yeah, 20 and years. and Norton is always like, always not recognizing that. The, the the view that other people see you and what other people see that you've accomplished in comedy and acting and and everything is just it's really phenomenal and and that you still have that self doubt you know yeah it, it it is a weird line with it too i think every performer has to have it on some level it kind of motivates you to be good so you mm. don't just walk up there and mail it in but then there's the point where you just got to be careful. It's not debilitating. Like where you're like, oh, I'm such shit. They like, a lot of guys have that and sabotage themselves. So there's a really weird gray area between uh, like where, where it can hurt you and where it can help you. And then where you can just kind of exist with it. Right. But yeah. After a while, like I, I'm not good at watching myself. Like some yeah. comedians fucking fascinating. They can sit you down and go, look at this set I did. And then mm -hmm. like, and, and we'll look, Hey, am I, aren't I wonderful? And I, I, <laughs> Dude, I, 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 and they usually stink. And yeah, they usually stink. Yeah. Yeah. And they usually stink. It's crazy. Yeah. I hate it. I can't watch any of it unless I'm in the process of editing. Then you can watch something you're doing because you're like, well, it's part of, I'm still doing it. Right. Right. Edit it. And I have to see how this worked. And you're still in fucking task work mode. mode. Yeah. Work mode. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're not in I hate my own guts mode. You're in yeah. get this done and submitted on One time. One part mode. of you has like humility about it. You're like self-aware. And then when you can like compartmentalize and be like, all right, this is a task now. I'm doing a job. You can remove the humility part. You can remove yourself, yeah. all your feelings and just be like, I'm a computer. I'm going to just t get this shit edited, get it done and be like, I'm out. Yeah, just watch it. I can watch it like detached. Like as I'm editing, I'm mm. like, oh blinking piece of shit and i forget that it's me you know that's, yeah, that's you the beauty detach. of it i can just edit what needs to be edited hand it in and then never watch it again you always suggest I, a lot of cgi i jack, off, can we I jack off with i jack off with gold slagger naked with in baby oil with candles as i watch my sets oh you, just, do. <laughs> you enjoy them huh <laughs> ghost slagger? i'm like that guy <laughs> that guy good. right there jesus christ who would have thought that huh yeah. who uh, would <laughs> That's the look you just if you're, if you're watching yourself with someone else, just kind of go. Huh? I mean, it's me. I can't believe it's me either. You know, I'm so good. Yeah. But yeah. does that does that does that ever affect your personal life to some degree at all? Like, I mean, you got a girl now, Jim? You with somebody or no? I date, uh, but you uh, I, I date. But to answer your question, yes, destroyed my personal life. Of course it has. <laughs> because I'm, I'm always convinced they're fucking someone else uh, because why wouldn't they be? Um, yeah, I'm always it wrecks my personal life, of course, because um, it makes you difficult because you don't believe anything good should happen for you. So when something good happens, you, uh, you you sabotage it or you don't enjoy it because you're too worried about losing it. So, yeah, it definitely fucks up. My well, I mean, I, I, kinda, I think it's so crazy because I, it's almost like you're like you don't believe yourself. Do you know what I mean? It's like. If you so so for me, the way I get I, I, the way I get out of my head is that I, I, I make it as pragmatic as possible. Like, for instance, when I was a kid, I used to be afraid of, of roller coasters and my sister used to always want me to go on roller coasters. But then I was like, I, it, I, I go, look, it's it's there's two hours of people online after me. Right. right? If I die, they're not going to be able to get on. The, 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 like, you know. Six Flags is not made to kill me. So the, the whole point is the fact that we think we might die and the fact that we don't is what the fun is. But it's ridiculous for you to be have a fear that you're going to die on a ride that's not set up for you to die. And then what is everybody behind you? Uh, the, 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 the next the next eight hours of people online 
uh, what are they going to do? Are they just going to move your body out the way? It's just a, it's an absurd kind of phobia that doesn't even sit in a real place. There's no there's no founding in it. Although all the people behind you would get on the ride. It's like a plane crash. If you hear about <laughs> a plane crash, you're like, they're so rare. Fuck, yeah, right. Great day to fly because they never happen two days in a row. So if you flew off a roller coaster and died, <laughs> more like, people uh, would go on. She's like, this is not going to happen twice. In, <laughs> in <a day." laughs> I know that that's that the flying thing. I always try to tell myself like, all right, listen, the odds are it's more dangerous yeah. to drive. Right. And sure. you know that. Yeah. But when that plane hits that like turbulence, it takes that like 10 yeah. foot drop. You don't give a shit about the statistics. Yeah. You're like, I can't believe this is the way I'm going to die. Yeah. I watch turbulence videos on YouTube. You go on YouTube and watch. you can watch anything now. And there's, there's, yeah, yeah. there's hours of videos of people hitting really bad turbulence. And it's horrifying. But then you're like, well, they all landed like they're yeah. all. Okay. Right, 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 right. I'm watching this video. They made it or, or they're not. <laughs> yeah, or they were live streaming and they're dead. Yeah, it could be one of those. It could be. It could be that too. You're right. Oh, uh, it's it's weird because it's like, why is it that you think somebody's always like, if you're dating somebody, she's always fucking somebody else? Just a worst case scenario thing. Like, yeah. You know, mm. sure. It's always uh, it's called a catastrophizing. You know, always catastrophizing everything and seeing that it's just gonna, it's going to be a disaster. It's probably a way of preparing yourself for any possible letdown any possible horrible things that can happen if you've already thought the scenario through it's not as bad if it happened you man school 202 better hear what i've got to say because you won't get it again i'm not an alpha male i'm not a beta male either i'm just a better man better man well, put your happiness first because if you don't they won't